Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome back to The Real Legend of Gaming. We are back with some Clash Royale. Now, folks, I just want to take a moment and give a huge shout-out to the Team Immortals for winning the NA Championship in CRL. Great job, guys. Looking forward to seeing you participate in the World Finals along with my fellow teammates from Nova Esports. So it should be very exciting. All right, so as far as this video, folks, we're going to go over... You know, anticipated balance changes, a couple cards that I think should be nerfed, some cards that should be buffed. And what I did was I took some information from the in-game vote for Clash Royale. And I also tied in some votes that took place inside my community, inside of YouTube. So feedback from everybody along with members from my clan inside DRL Nation. I think I got a couple of choices for us to go over in this video. And then what I'll do is also show you some gameplay from a couple of my recent ladder matches so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm explaining with some of these cards and my thought process behind it. Now you can see in the background, the in-game vote was between the Dark Goblin and the Archer. The Dark Goblin won the vote, so it's going to get a damage increase of 4%. I personally was hoping for the Archers to get the hit point increase of 4%. That way you can at least be able to tolerate damage from the Barbarian Barrel or from the log, but you know, at the end of the day, the community made the vote on this, and this is what's gonna happen. It's already set in stone. All right, so enough with that, folks. Let's drop that intro, and after that, we're gonna go over the cards that should be buffed and nerfed for upcoming balance changes in November. So let's check it out. All right, so I did a poll inside of my community tab inside of my YouTube channel, and I basically wanted to get an idea of what cards should be buffed and nerfed. And I also wanted to know if you guys were going for the Archer or the Dark Goblin. Or if you felt the cards don't need a change. So basically 10 people voted and a majority felt the Dark Goblin should be buffed. Which is cool because I was in line with the in-game vote as well. So it's good to know that the community is pretty consistent, right? Alright, so we got some feedback from David on the Sade. And basically, David expresses that right now, everyone wants an Expo in Mordor buff. These decks will be everywhere if Archers are buff. I got to agree with that to a certain extent. Right now, I think Giant needs a buff due to the insane Royal Giant buff. Now, I've been actually seen a lot of people echo the same sentiment. Now, the next thing he says is, please nerf the Furnace. I got to be very honest. I agree with that 100%. The Furnace is OP, and I actually commented back, but yesterday I encountered a Furnace in the ladder. It was level 13, and that thing was doing chip damage against my tower. And my tower it was also level 13, so you can only imagine what it can do against a lower level tower, especially if you don't defend against it. And what I'm going to do here is show you that match so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, now... Be real honest, I'm using the same deck, folks. I'm actually kind of pushing on ladder this time for the first time ever. You guys know I really don't because I'm always using different decks. Uh, but we hit 4840 with the deck that I showed in the last video and featured um, about a month before that as well. But again, so you know, this is the control deck that we've been playing with the Pekka. I really love this deck, and I'm going to show you right now exactly what I'm talking about with the max level furnace, which I think was the second replay here. We're going to go right into that. And then afterwards, I'm going to go and take some explanations about the Infernal Tower as well. But check out this replay, man. I, I just thought it was so crazy. So there goes the max level Furnace, right? So I'm waiting for my Lix account to build up. Check this out. Bomb. You see how much damage it did? Now, if my tower was like level 12 or 11, that first pup might not have been destroyed. So, you know, it's something to be worried about because, for one, the duration that that furnace stays locked on is very long. And it forces you to use your lightning spell to kind of take out a building and a troop, which, in actuality, you'd rather save it for when there's three units around that, you know, can create more of a threat. All right, so I'm going to show you another replay here. This has the giant and it has the infernal tower, so... I've seen people say that the Giant needs a buff because of the Royal Giant buff. And obviously, there's also some people that feel that the Goblin Giant needs a buff as well. Uh, one of my uh, clan mates, Danny Boyce, mentioned that you know he felt that a lot of the community is leaning towards a buff for the Royal Recruits and for the Goblin Giant. So that's something that we probably will anticipate as well. 
But if the max level giant got a buff, man, that thing will be very scary. Because again, that's a card that you cannot just ignore. And it's going to be very, very difficult to stop. I mean, you see how much commitment I have to put towards stopping that and whatever stack behind it. You know, luckily, um, you know, if you have like a decent cycle deck or even like a control deck that doesn't require you to play your P.E.K.K.A. until like the second half of the match, you probably in most cases will be able to defend adequately. But nonetheless, you know, it's something to consider. Now, the Inferno Tower, I've even seen people like Sir Tag CR who asserts his dominance everywhere. The guy's a beast. But he thinks the Inferno Tower should be buff. I originally thought he was crazy for that thought. And again, you know, big fan of you, so don't take that personal. But recently, I understand why, right? Because with the E-Dragon getting above, well, not even getting above, but the card being released, you know, it's going to be shutting down Inferno Towers and it's going to become almost not usable. And that's an important building in the meadow because there aren't too many buildings to use that are effective. You know, you got the cannon, you got the tombstone, and then you can say the Inferno Tower. Because people really aren't using the Goblin Hunt like they used to. The Bomb Tower was really cool when they nerfed it like the first week, but that's about it. So, you know, that's just, you know, something, you know, also to be considered by CR. And if I forgot a building, please forgive me. Uh, because I'm just thinking the ones that I mainly see in the ladder. But for the most part, I mean, the options are limited. Uh, especially like, you know, I mean, you can arguably say Mordor and Expo, but those are unique decks that most people are not using, right? You, you gotta kind of be able to specialize the Expo deck, it requires a lot of patience, and with the buff to the Royal Giant, you've seen the Expo being used a lot less. Uh, there's one Expo deck that has been doing pretty well, I featured it on our channel a few weeks ago, and that's the version with the Ice Wizard and the Mega Minion. Other than that, you know, the Expo took a hit. And the Mortar deck, you don't really see as much either. Uh, there is one version that I also did feature with the Hawk. has been pretty solid, but, you know, you guys get the drift, right? The buildings are not playing a huge role like they used to. So that's pretty much, you know, my perspective on that. Now, in my opinion, I think the game is in a great state. The meta is very diverse. And I don't think many cards need to be changed. I'm pretty okay with the way the cards are. Um, my personal opinion is just the, the furnace to get nerfed. But then that kind of contradicts the argument I just made a little while ago about buildings not being like too strong or, or consistent in the meta. And that's also a building I forgot to mention too. But, you know, that deserves a, a nerf, I still think. The arches I felt like should have gotten a buff. I'm still trying to figure out if that will be an indirect buff to the Rascals. I did ask that question around, and I haven't gotten an answer yet, but I, I think it might because, right, it does have two archers in that, you know, combination. But other than that, you know, we know for sure the Dark Goblins getting buffed. I'm hearing that the Royal Recruits are getting buffed. The Infernal Tower could get buffed because it was one of the options on that poll for the last month where the Ice Wizard got um, voted in. So, you know, just something to look forward to. Other than that, folks, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Give me some feedback. You know, let me know what cards need to be buffed or nerfed. And also, let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Um, I haven't been switching up my deck a lot because I'm really feeling really good with this deck that I'm using. So if there's some other type of Clash Royale videos you want to see, just let me know and I'll try my best to get that for you during the week. All right. So other than that, appreciate the support. Peace out, folks.